What's up, OU, and welcome to another episode of Focus on Faculty. I'm your host, Xavier Hershevitz, and coming up, we're talking to Professor of Exercise Science, Dan Goble. And then a little later, we'll sit down and chat with Andrea Ice, a professor and chair of Cinema Studies. Keep it here, because you don't want to miss what's coming up. Welcome back to Focus on Faculty. I'm your host, Xavier Hershevitz. And we're here in the Human Health Building in an exercise science lab, and we're joined with Professor of Exercise Science, Mr. Dan Goble. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Xavier. I'm so excited to talk to you, and we're going to start today with where are you from? Yeah, so this is kind of what I do with all my students, actually, is when they come to my office and they visit me, I'm like, where are you from? How did you get here? So I'm from Canada originally. I'm from just outside of Windsor, a real small town, about 2,000 people. Uh, grew up there and ended up going to university at the University of Windsor. Uh, studied human kinetics at the University of Windsor. And I was in a really cool program there. It was a co-op program uh, where they took a subset of the undergraduates, the first year undergraduates, and they gave us full-time jobs every other semester in our field. It was a really great opportunity. Uh, so I did placements in physical therapy, uh, athletic training, and ergonomics. And coming out of that undergraduate degree, I was like, I want to be a physical therapist. It's, the, it's a good healthcare job. It's a nice thing you can tell your parents, and they feel good about it. Um, but after I graduated uh, my undergraduate, I actually was out of sequence. So I graduated in December and uh, couldn't start physical therapy in the fall, so I had some time to kill, and a professor who was in my program sat me down and he said, listen, you have really good grades. Uh, we have this master's program, you have time. Why don't you apply for a little bit of money and we'll try to start a master's degree. If, if you like it, finish it. If you don't, then you become a physical therapist. Sure enough, I start the master's degree and three weeks in I realize, man, I do not want to be a physical therapist at all. It's a great profession, but what really interests me is logic and puzzles and doing research. So I got doing research on walking and symmetry and uh, decided, yes, I got to finish this master's. So after your master's degree, where did you go from there? So I did my master's also at Windsor. And after that was done, the same professor sat me down again. He said, well, if you're going to do this, you got to do it right. Uh, he had gone to the University of Illinois, so he said, you got to go to a big U.S. institution, get the big education, get all the networking that goes around it, and uh, so I started applying to schools in the Big Ten. I applied to five schools, uh, and somehow, some way, only got into my first choice, uh, but my first choice was Michigan. I'm a big sports fan, big football fan. That's too bad. I'm more of a Spartan fan, but it's okay. I'm not mad at you. I'm not going to cut the interview short or anything. Well, we're both Golden Grizzlies. That's true. So we can, we, we can uh, unite on that one. Where did you find that love for teaching students? Sure. So interesting thing about me is I'm actually a sixth generation teacher. So through my dad's family, back through his grandmother and his grandmother, uh, they've all been teachers of one sort. Both my parents were actually high school teachers. My sister's an elementary teacher. So I think there's sort of a genetic mm -hmm. uh, teaching is in my blood, you could say. Um, and ever since I've been in university, doing university teaching, I've, I've won several teaching awards. Uh, I sort of have this philosophy where I like to be kind of cutting edge with technology and things that, that the students might be interested in, so I integrate things like social media, particularly Twitter, into my classes. Uh, we do a lot of like YouTube videos and integration of those types of things. And the teaching just comes really naturally to me, I find. Therapy. When did you know this was like the vein you wanted to be in? Yeah, so I, it, I kind of stumbled into it, and I think that happens a lot with academics, is they, they stumble into whatever field they want to be in. When I was growing up, I was an athlete. I played lots of sports. I was all county in several sports in high school. So when I came to choose a university program, uh, I actually applied to two business schools and, and one kinesiology program. 
And because I just love sports so much, I chose kinesiology over business. Now it turns out, you know, over time, I ended up coming back to business. Uh, so there's been this beautiful blend of the two things in the end anyways. Um, but yeah, it was more just a real interest in movement and performance and, and uh, all things kind of athletic. And then that kind of mesh to the other side of the coin. So when you, when you get in this world of kinesiology, uh, you can look at these high level performers, but you also have the flip side of the thing, which is uh, disabilities and how various diseases affect your movement. And that's, that's the, the whole end with PT and, and that interest as well. Yeah. So um, what, what kind of classes do you teach here at Oakland? So at Oakland, I teach several classes, uh, some undergraduate, some graduate. At the undergraduate level, uh, I've been involved with the human motion analysis class, which is a biomechanics class here. It teaches students sort of how to, all the, the physics, it applies physics to the human body as people are doing various movements. So you're calculating how fast things are being thrown and trajectories and different ways of moving to optimize performance. Um, in addition, I'm actually starting a new class in the fall, which will be a motor control class which really is gonna look at how the brain controls movement uh, in the body. So we start at the very basic level. We talk about neurons, which are the individual cells that make up our brain and our nervous system. And we follow sort of the signals all the way from the brain down out to the muscles. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, uh, I've taught the graduate class in biomechanics as well. And beyond that, I actually also teach a, a research class specific. So I, I, I take on up to 10 undergraduate students, I bring them into my, my lab, and I have them do a semester's worth of data collection and reading papers and giving presentations, and that's, that's a really good experience at the undergraduate level. Not many places do that. Of all of those classes, is there one of them that's your favorite to teach? I probably like the graduate class the best just because I love to see the ideas that these uh, students come up with uh, they always sort of bring their own perspective, so they ask these questions that are like from, a lot of them are like personal trainers in the field, or they're doing physical therapy uh, hours, and they all come from these backgrounds, and they ask these very interesting questions, and then I try to guide them into these doable experiments, and it's always just, it's really, a, it's a nice collaboration between teacher and student. Yeah, and on top of your teaching here, you also do research which your research uh, you did recently was actually featured in Physical Therapy Journal. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I've been building up my research here at, at uh, Oakland since I got here from San Diego State. And uh, the thing we're doing the most of now is we're building a giant normative database of balance results. So one of the cool things about the B-Track system is I actually create the software. And when I created the software, I put a button in the software that's called Contribute Data. And so everyone who has one of these, we have them now you know, in 46 states, in 16 different countries across the world. They have this button in their software, and occasionally I just send out, can you please hit the button and send me your data? And what it does is it takes all the names off of it, makes it anonymous, keeps it all private. But then we have this giant database of over 20,000 results already now that we can use to put back into the software as percentile rankings. So now if you run the test, you get compared to 20,000 people, we can tell you, you know, are you in the 50th percentile, the 90th percentile, and give them a really good feel for what their performance is like on our, on our tests. And that's what the Physical Therapy Journal article was about. And so when someone you, um, uses your system, what does that do for them in terms of their day-to-day -day life after they've, after they've run that test? Sure. So right now, these are being used by primarily athletic trainers for concussion assessments. So that's obviously a big deal. Concussion's mm. been big in the media and trying to keep af get athletes, uh, good measures of athlete concussions to know when they can go back to, spo to sports is important. Uh, we, have a, we have physical therapists. Uh, users as well, so they use it in the physical therapy clinic to measure balance throughout the physical therapy period and, and see if they're, the physical therapy they're doing is actually having a, a positive impact on people with bad balance. Uh, we have a lot of chiropractic uh, users, and what they tend to like to use it for is, is both balance, they definitely track balance, 
But because they're doing all these alignments of the spine, you can, you can use this plate to, to, to get a global measure of whether somebody is like putting equal weight on the two sides of their body uh, or if they're leaning forward too far. So you can get this really nice picture of whether your spinal adjustments are doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, and then we have a, a really large segment growing now of people who are doing fall risk assessment, which ties back to my training in Belgium, uh, where now we have a test that takes two minutes and we can tell people whether they have low, moderate, or high fall risk. And if they do have high fall risk, we have statistics to show that more than half of them are gonna fall in the next 12 months, uh, which is something we really need to know so that we can hopefully prevent some of those falls. They're very expensive to both society and of course the person who's affected by the fall. Um, so it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, what got you interested in studying balance? Yeah, I uh, kind of fell into the balance thing too. Originally I was very interested in symmetry in the body. Uh, I did studies on handedness and uh, differences between right, right and left legs and right and left arms. But then when I got into Belgium and started doing the work there, uh, you, you read these statistics about people and their balance and falls and if they get injured and end up in the hospital. Um, a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of bad, it, it's a big public health issue. And I just felt like if you're going to do science, it should have a big impact. And that's an area where I could have a really big impact. So between running a business, uh, teaching and researching, which one is kind of your favorite thing to do? I think what's helped make me successful has been blending the three together. So I, I've really done a good job of, you know, all the science I do here is related to this. This is the business. In my teaching, I often bring this into my teaching. So uh, they're all my favorite because they all kind of mesh into one yeah. another. What advice would you have for students that maybe don't really know where they're going? Like when, at one point you, where you were. Yeah, so I get a lot of students come by my office and uh, you know, it's inevitable, especially in today where it seems like an undergraduate degree doesn't have the value that it used to have. You almost need to have that graduate degree on top of it to really set yourself apart in the workplace. Um, so I do, I do a fair bit of career advising my advice to them is always to keep your options open. I think that's what I did the best was like, I didn't get so laser focused on this is what I want to do. I, I gave myself, like I tried the master's degree and sure enough, the master's degree took me a different direction. And for them, I'm always like, you know, apply to a few different programs, a few different things, see what comes up, weigh the options and then go from there. Um, how can students get in touch with you? Uh, I'm pretty widely available. Uh, if you Google me, there's, there's a fair bit that comes up. The best way to get a hold of me is through email, uh, so just through my Oakland email. I'm also very active on social media, so I have over a thousand Twitter followers, so if they are Twitter active and want to add me on Twitter and DM me and slide into my mentions, that's all, all fine by me. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm around too in my office. I'm, I'm here even in the summer when I'm not getting paid. So I, I, they can get a hold of me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Global, for sitting and talking with us today and sharing your story. Really appreciate it. I know a lot of people probably learned something from that. So thank you. You're welcome. And stay tuned for more Focus on Faculty after this.